Hey, Frosty Clan, thanks for joining in to part three of the ASUS Hyper M.2 NVMe Arrayed, uh, where on part one, uh, we installed the NVMe. So on part two, uh, we messed around with implementing the uh, RAID card uh, on my ASUS motherboard. And if you're looking for those details, go look at part one and two. Uh, this video is really going to be about the performance uh, and how it affected my workflow in the period once I installed it. And then we're going to look at performance against other types of hard drive and solid state storage, including SSD running through SATA or onboard uh, NVMe. And we're also going to look at how it compares to Microsoft Storage Space's uh, hard drive array in triple uh, redundancy. So stay tuned and for those of you joining the channel uh, for outdoor adventures, hang in there. Uh, those are going to be rolling out soon. So here we go. This is how the case looks with the ASUS M.2 X16 card in it, and because of the way the PCIe lanes work, uh, to get it rated with three NVMEs in it, uh, I really have to use it in the X16 one slot. And, you know, I can use that little SATA card at the bottom in the uh, X16 three slot but I really can't use uh, anything in the X2 slot or it won't work. And that really means that I can't use, I could use a graphics card, a GPU, dedicated GPU, but the performance out of it running in that X3 or the uh, X16 slot three was just so poor that um, it just didn't work. And ultimately I'm gonna not going to be using this configuration for my workflow. But that's what it looks like if you were using it in this configuration. Okay, so now we're going to test the Asus Hyper M.2 V2 card and uh, that's got the three terabyte RAID zero, the three NVMEs in it. So that's this drive, and we're going to start with the suite. And here we go. Okay, so there's the test. We're gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, and now we're gonna run the uh, buffered read test. Okay, so the buffered read test is complete. We are now going to move on to the random read test and see how that does.
Okay, so the random read test is done, and uh, now we're gonna follow that up with the crystal disc mark, uh, 6.0.2 x64, nine iterations. We've gotta change the drive to G, and here we go. Okay, so that test is almost complete. We're on the eighth iteration of the final write test. So let's tally up the results here. All right, so the way these go in, and you can put these in backwards if you're putting them in a slot other than an X1 slot. So if you're putting them in uh, an X16, an X4, or an X8 slot, you know, they, you can put them in backwards. So in the X1 slot, you just wanna make sure that, you know, they go in the proper way. And in this case, that's facing down. So there are my three one terabyte PCIe 3.0 X1 NVMEs installed. So now we'll put the dedicated GPU, we'll install it vertically and run a ribbon cable to the PCIe X16 slot one and fire it up. We did extensive rigorous testing on five different drive or drive arrays, uh, starting with down here at the bottom is the labels, uh, a 960, one terabyte uh, Samsung Evo NVMe drive, which is on the motherboard slot. Uh, it's M.2 slot two on the ASUS Maximus Hero 11 Wi-Fi motherboard. And we tested an SSD, which was a Samsung 850 Evo, two terabyte. We also tested a, uh, the same Intel 660Ps that were used in the Hyper M.2 
uh, card array. After testing this card, we took those out and installed them in the 1X PCIe uh, card NVMe holders that you saw previously in the video and uh, installed those into the three X1 slots on this motherboard and then put those in RAID 0 and we tested those as well. We also tested a Microsoft Storage Spaces array, which is a hard drive array dominantly with some SSD uh, for cache, but, or cache. And so those are the drives or drive arrays that we tested. Uh, and by rigorous, what I mean is we ran on each of these different drive or drive arrays we ran crystal disk mark tests. Uh, we ran 12 different cycles of nine iterations each, giving us a total of 108 iterations on each of these drives, which is should be statistically significant. And one of the things that we noticed, uh, in particular with the ASUS, is that the variance between runs was obvious and apparent. And so uh, there were a lot higher swings between the medium or, or the minimum and the maximum results that we would get on the runs. Um, but in short, this chart really shows everything. Now, Crystal Dismark runs four different tests that it shows you the details for, the 4KB Q1 T1, uh, 4KB Q3 2 T1, and the 4KB Q8 T8, and the sequential Q32 T1. And what we did in each scenario was run uh, the 12 nine iteration tests, and the average of each of those for each test is shown here according to whichever drive we're testing. And then we average the results of these four to come up with a measure uh, to compare the overall performance uh, results between the drive arrays. And then, so when you see average right here, that's simply the average of each of these four tests for each drive, and the same for the average read results. One of the things that you'll notice, you probably noticed already looking at the chart, is that the results are pretty consistent throughout. In particular, they're consistent with the high in every case and the low in every case. And then there are some situations where the RAID um, on the motherboard in the X1 slots actually slightly overperform the uh, SSD, but generally they're, they're both in the middle and generally the SSD outperformed the RAID slightly but I think what you'll see in the results is that they're basically the same. So let's take a look at the average write results. And so we had the single one terabyte Evo 960 Samsung uh, NVMe on the motherboard uh, coming in with an average write of three point, almost 3.2 gigabytes a second. Uh, we had the Samsung 850 Evo SSD running, uh, this would be in SATA, not in VME, running off of a X4 a PCIe slot on the motherboard, uh, SATA controller is what that's running through, and it realized 2.9, almost, well, 2.95 gigabytes a second. And then the three Intel 660Ps in three separate PCIe X1 slots and then RAID 0. Uh, performed comparably to the two terabyte SSD coming in at 2.93 gigabytes per second. And uh, then at the bottom, not quite at the bottom, but in the bottom of the solid state drives uh, is the ASUS Hyper M.2 X16 V2 uh, NVMe array coming in at 2.7 gigabytes a second. Now, I'm really not gonna talk a lot about the Microsoft Storage Spaces results because I don't think Crystal Dismark is accurately reporting the results on the Microsoft Storage Spaces uh, results. You know, I typically get uh, read and write speeds in practical real-world applications that range anywhere from 
you know, 185, 190 megabytes a second uh, to 900 megabytes a second, depending on exactly what I'm doing uh, in the real world. So I've effectively, even though we ran all the tests on the Microsoft Storage Space Drive, uh, I'm really ignoring those for this discussion. So the clear winner on the write speed is the Samsung 960 NVMe, which is no surprise. If you were looking for kind of cheap, large storage, um, I think certainly the three Intel 660Ps on a value basis um, is cheaper than the 850 SSD um, by quite a bit, actually. And uh, you get the same performance from a write uh, point of view. And so that definitely is a, an interesting option uh, if you're trying to add some fast uh, scratch storage um, cheaply. If we look at the read results, you know, they come in the same. So the trend is the same. The uh, single Samsung 960 Evo uh, NVMe coming in at 3.4 gigabytes a second read. Um, the SSD coming in at 3.2 and the uh, three NVMEs in RAID 0 on the X1 slots coming in at almost 3.2 uh, materially the same and certainly on a value basis um, you'd have to think uh, you know if you're using it for scratch and not long-term storage and you're not concerned about RAID 0 then uh, this would be a good value way uh, to get some you know three terabytes of fast NVMe storage and then coming in at the bottom again on the solid-state drives is the ASUS Hyper M.2 X16 V2 RAID array, and again, that's using the same Intel 660p drives as the RAID 0 right above it. So, I mean, literally, I just, we ran the test on the Hyper M.2 and then later uh, configured the RAID 0 on the PCIe X1 slots on the motherboard. And um, because each of those X1 PCIe NVMe uh, PCBs so that you can use those on your motherboard run about six dollars on Amazon five something and change five ninety nine or something like that. You know this is a much more economical way to get the storage, uh, and you'll get a performance increase uh, doing it this way versus what we experience uh, in our workflow uh, on this workstation using the ASUS Hyper M.2 card which is the reason, it's one of the reasons. So it's not just the disk speed, but uh, you know, I did not make it a whole month with running the ASUS Hyper M.2 X16 V2 card uh, in my system because of how it impacted the utilization of my GPU and what that impact of my GPU had on my workflow with rendering videos and processing photos, et cetera. So it's not just about speed. Uh, it really is also about the PCIe lane management. And for, that, for those reasons all combined, um, I'm not running the ASUS M.2 card in my system. Uh, currently, I don't expect to, I still have it. And in the future, if I get a lot more PCIe lanes, it may make sense. Uh, to put it back into a system, but uh, I'm not running it now and I can't recommend it to you. I think, you know, volume and dollar wise, you know, the SSDs are gonna be a good value solution. And then if you've got free slots on your motherboard, uh, you know, picking up some of these economical Intel 660Ps while they last, may be a good solution for you as long as you know you're not concerned about uh, RAID 0. So you certainly want, wouldn't want to be using this probably for uh, main data storage, long-term kind of cold storage. So if you have backup solutions in place, then the RAID 0 solution is going to be cheap and, and economical. I think I got these Intel 660p uh, drives on sale for about $94 a piece. 
Um, and then again, the PCB uh, boards, cards for the X1 slots were around $5 a chain, six bucks a piece, so another $18. And so really you're looking at, uh, what, around 320 bucks for a three terabyte uh, fast solution. And uh, that'd be hard to, to find a comparable uh, solution in an SSD for 320 bucks. So that's probably would be my recommendation is to stick in this area if you're looking for value. Uh, certainly if I had um, three one terabyte fast NVMEs uh, like the Samsung 960 or 970 or even Farcuda or some of the other new faster NVMe drives that were coming out, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that the performance of the M.2 uh, X16 card rate array would be better. However, when you start looking at the price of that, you know, three one terabyte 960s plus the card, and you compare that to just buying one of the new, like Fire Cuda four terabyte NVMEs, you know, I'd probably lean toward a single four terabyte NVME uh, in that case, because I think it's gonna be cheaper than buying three one terabyte cards, putting them in RAID zero on this card, and then complicating uh, my life with the PCIe lanes uh, and my GPU that I experienced. And so, um, you know, I'm not sure that's a good quality solution either. So I just think from my workflow and workstation setup, it just doesn't work out to be an optimized solution uh, for my workflow. So I hope you thought that was helpful uh, review of the ASUS M.2 uh, Hyper M.2 X16 card and its performance. Bottom line, uh, if I had all this information up front, it's specific to my installation on the ASUS Maximus Hero 11 Wi-Fi motherboard that I use, uh, I probably wouldn't have purchased it uh, and would stick with an SSD. Uh, which in fact, I went back and purchased uh, an even larger SSD to handle my media needs because of the obvious performance uh, complexity and, and maintenance related to uh, none with the SSD and uh, really no more performance with having multiple NVMEs in a RAID configuration using this card. So thanks for joining, I appreciate your time and Stay tuned on the channel for, for everybody that uh, tunes in to the outdoor gear reviews, uh, keto trail recipes for backpacking and backpacking gear and that kind of thing. Uh, stay tuned, those are coming down the pike, including some uh, unboxings of new gear, some of which has started to come in and I've got several other things that are arriving here at the end of February. So stay tuned for those videos. It's not gonna turn into a tech channel, these are just some of the things that we do uh, to bring you the content uh, that we do. So uh, stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button. And uh, if you like the video, give it a like. And remember, get up, get out, live a little. See ya.